John, how are you, mate? Good, brother. Good to see you again. How are you? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, another month has rolled around. More stuff going on, crazy stuff from all over the world coming at us. I don't even know where we're going to go today with this show. Just for the sake of the audience, we don't really plan it too much. We're just a general month catch-up chat, no? Well, we need to, David. I mean, there's so much information. The material sort of writes itself, right? I mean, it's it's we know it's mostly scripted anyway, so... Yeah. Um, How's that? Sorry, go ahead. How's morale on the streets of L.A.? I mean, how's morale on the streets of L.A.? You're in Los Angeles, so I'm always curious about, um, because California is so affected by the cabal, you know, the rules and regulations, the electric cars. Now there's not enough money because they haven't, no one's buying gasoline. It just seems to be getting worse and worse. Not specifically L.A., but I think California in general, more and more people are leaving. How are you feeling it every day, John, in your daily life, though? I'm curious. Well well, first of all, I mean, I try to keep a low profile and stay away from the city as a rule of thumb. You know, where I live is about 30 yeah. minutes from the city anyway. So I'm, I'm blessed. I'm closer to the beach community. Uh, so I'm sort of absconded from that. But I, you know, when I go shopping and I go around and day to day life, I, I watch people, watch their body language. It's tense. I see a lot more people honking their cars than usual. There's more impatience that people can feel that something's on the precipice precipice of happening i don't think they obviously know collectively know exactly what it is but they they know things are getting the the, the proverbial noose is getting tighter yeah so i, I feel t tension in a word um looking forward to myself to making that exodus when god releases me but remember this david as always what kim clement said when things seem at their worst i'm going to free my people i think we're getting to that point yeah, that's, I was talking to Derek Johnson yesterday. I had an hour chat with him, and I was Derek always talks about the the military codes, what's going on. He's been relatively quiet last month. He hasn't been on the road, but I've been noticing a lot more videos of people um, posting large convoys of military equipment that's been transported mm -hmm. all over the place, like three, four, five mile long. These trains, huge, huge numbers of heavy armored equipment i'm not just talking um you know humvees i'm talking proper tanks being transported all over the place now this equipment is traditionally in the hands of the national guard but what are they mobilizing for and where are they moving it to and why it's uh it's a, certainly a concern and a lot of the public are noticing this because mm -hmm. it, it is strange why would you be moving all that equipment there's no war going on you're not deploying anywhere so what's going on have you heard any any rumors that you could add to that particular storyline? I don't know about rumors, but I would say, first of all, we we have Derek on ourselves once a month like you. So we kind of take his pulse on things. And yeah, I've seen him. Uh, I'm praying for him because I think he's pretty tired. Uh, it's been a battle for him, especially he's closer to the front lines than most. Um, I've been yeah. getting texts from people around the country, Kentucky and Florida and other parts of the South about uh, military showing up in, in sort of suddenly moment places, tanks, and what you just talked about. Uh, I can only speculate that I think that as we get closer to, and we asked Eric if, we, if he even thought there was going to be an election because there's a lot of people that don't think there will be one that in October they're going to pull this plug, plug preemptively as part of the movie, right? So, you know, I, I asked him about that. Um, my speculation is that you know, I think that they're preparing for the EBS and the shutdown, and they're probably trying to build in reinforcements and certain test markets throughout the country to kind of see where the vulnerable spots are. Maybe a byproduct is how people will react to it, to your point. So that's about as much as I can add to that part of it. Yeah, um, I got this message. I can't read out all of it. Um, I told you that I have a top secret um I told you I've got a contact that has top secret clearance in the Pentagon. It's a family member from this person. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what is coming. I'm reading this quote now, by the way, for the sake of the audience. I don't know exactly what is coming, but something big is stirring up to happen um, because they've been mobilized inside there. This contact came from him. I hope you've got your uh, prep items ready and topped off and you're ready to buckle up. Hopefully the dominoes are um, ready to fall. Um, so that was a piece of intel I got from somebody who's 
Family member works inside the Pentagon. They were briefed on new security clearances and get getting told to uh, something big is going to happen. That's all this person would say about that. But that's another piece of, you know, direct intel. It shows you that we are moving closer and closer. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it, it's as I said. It, you asked your original question about you know the LA area. If you use that as an example or a litmus test, you can feel. You know, the wall sort of proverbially closing in. And I think that sort of speaks to what's going on both here in America and probably, I would imagine, throughout the whole of the world, and as we can see in different ways. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention to you, Dave, I thought was interesting. We we just did our, we do a weekly wrap up for our audience and kind of a, a weekly appraisal of what's going on throughout the world in different, you know, financial business, et cetera. Uh, one of the things that was interesting is Exxon Mobil has issued um, massive work for, workforce restructuring layoffs. They just did a, a $60 billion acquisition. Now, the layperson could say, oh, well, that's just normal uh, merger activity. Not like this, not with one of the world's largest oil companies. To me, that would suggest, David, that we're, we, we see these Middle East tensions, which we've talked about many, many times before in the past mm -hmm. in our shows and other shows. We can see that's a curvature coming into play. As we see that, I, I would see that oil prices, once the Middle East hits its tipping point here within the next week, weeks, uh, that you're going to see oil prices. I mean, they're, they're being suppressed right now. I think uh, as of today, it was just around $77, somewhere in that range. So it's abnormally low for where it, it you know, should be. And you could say, well, that's the part of the election selection cycle. But it's, it's, it speaks to an underlying issue, which I think once the Middle East tensions go, you're going to see oil prices spike up a lot, which we have talked about in the past. Yeah, I'm surprised it's not more than that. I haven't actually checked the barrel crude price for uh, quite a few years thinking about it. But considering how much tension there is in some of these oil producing nations, look at Venezuela, for example, there was a lot of political agitation going on there recently, still is. And then, of course, we don't need to talk too much about the Middle East as far as that goes, as people were aware of it. But $77 a barrel. What's a gallon of gasoline, John? Do you remember? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? What's it? What are you paying at the pump? in california for a gallon of gas <laughs> we always pay more than anybody else of course because the wonderful california consumption tax um it, it was 385 when i filled up earlier this week still not bad it's like that's half what we pay in europe i pay about a dollar 70 a liter so that's about five bucks 550 a gallon for us here so um, we were all the, the, that's normal European prices are also and Spain is one of the lowest in Europe UK is one of the highest um, John I wanted to touch on a, a weird little story that happened over the last couple of days did you hear about this large yacht that sank in Sicily we just talked about that today yes ah, I have were you talking about that yeah the wife survived but they are still looking for him right yeah this lynch so give me the screen can I share the screen please go I'll ahead yeah, screen. yeah 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 just enable that for me and i'll show the audience what i'm talking about because this is very strange um once you so get that, once you get a that, large ahead. i'm sorry once you get done with that i have something to share with you as well but go ahead good well i wanted to bounce this off to you see but a typical john fashion you, you you're you're on top of it i like that <laughs> so we had this sisterly yacht sinking and conspiracy theories started going all over the place because this is the yacht Okay, so it's a huge, 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 huge. It's a, like a, a sailing yacht, but it capsized and sank in record time due to what they said was a twister, which was a la large water spout, basically, at sea. Now, the guy that was uh, on board the boat, Lynch, was a founder of a tech company. And uh, what makes it all the weirder is he went into a massive fight with Hewitt Packard for $11 billion, um, And then the, Hewitt Packard accused him of manipulating the books and he went into a battle since 2011 and basically won it last month so which concluded in june 2024 with his acquittal on criminal charges by a jury in san francisco now the other thing about his partner was killed two days ago while jogging hit by a truck so i mean what are the chances of him his partner being hit by a truck jogging now the under the underscore of this is apparently it's some software that they developed that's basically gives all of the uh, three letter agencies access to absolutely everything so there's no privacy your computer your laptop your desktop your phone they can get into anything um 
he died. They got most of the people out, apart from the chef, poor guy. Um, and this is the other one, like Clive Ansel remarked on the strange coincidence saying, I'm not much of a conspiracy theorist normally, but Mike Lynch and Stephen Chamberlain both disappearing or dying so close together after being declared innocent over the autonomy sale definitely got me thinking. So I wonder what the story is and why were they killed? Was that a vendetta, a great big F you? You know, we're not going to let you get away with it. Watch this because we know they have weather manipulation equipment when the right people at the top do have access to this. Was it a favor they called in? Now, I've got a very good friend of mine that I was at a wedding with. He is a super yacht captain. He'll know this boat. I'm going to reach out to him, get a bit more information. I've just been tracking it today, so I haven't got around to it. But um, there's something in that story that it re remarkably similar to this sort of Titanic situation where there was two important or several important people on the boat. They wanted them dead. What a great way to cover it all up. Um, so was there something else sinister? Why did he not get out, but everybody else did? You know, they rescued a one year a one year old baby got out, but Lynch didn't get out. Mm -hmm. Very strange. Almost like he was isolated and targeted. Yeah. Or, you know, incapacitated maybe before it went down. Great way to cover up an assassination as usual. Massive destruction events where they're trying to cover up what's really been going on. Thing went straight to the bottom very quickly. It's it's interesting, David, because as you shared on that, because like I guess we touched on our weekly wrap-up today, uh, which will be coming out about the same time as this show, co not coincidentally. Um, you have the Scottish Leadership Party had a step down. You have a guy named Thierry. I'm just looking at my notes. Thierry Henry has resigned as his role, the manager of France's youth teams right after the Olympics. All of a sudden, you're getting a lot of resignations and step downs. Right, around, I mean, it's been going ongoing, obviously, but it's just curious. Globally, you're seeing this systematic wave from the U.S. all around the globe of of these layoffs, these firings. Uh, you know, GM just laid off a thousand workers, 600 of which were in the Detroit plant of the IT staff. Uh, Genevieve Rove Dector, who is on X, uh, she's almost reported on daily by X22, as you may know, it's very good at getting a lot of the business and financial aspects. She's talking about how the numbers are completely manipulated for the job market, that they're almost 1.1 million worse than what the fake news is reporting. No surprise, but what's staggering is how exaggerated and how you know lopsided the numbers are uh, in terms of you know, firings and unemployment and it just going across the board. Um, well, it, it doesn't surprise me. Some of the industries that Biden shut down, I mean, the petroleum drilling and oil and gas industry shutting that down. I mean, that's absolute suicide. Why yeah. you would do that to a country that consumes, I think it's the largest consumer of petroleum in, in the world, but you're going to shut down native, natural already existing drilling platforms and stations for what for this new new trend that oh you know carbon emissions and it's green planet and it's killing the planet but these guys are all flying around in jets all over the place um not to mention real quick oil. i'm sorry i apologize not to mention Go. the biden whoever that is we know um has also been dipping here in america to the oil reserves which you're not supposed to do we're not in a wartime, we're not an emergency situation, but they're creating one because it's a part of the false flag chaos and panic. So they're dipping into the oil reserves. That's the only reason the oil prices here in America to, to the pump are are what they are. Um, there's just there's so much going on. It's just overwhelming, all these touch points. I'm sorry, back to you. Yeah, I was going to say, um, what was the other point? We were talking about gasoline um, and that. I forgot the point now. It was going to lead on to something else. Um, what else was I going to talk about? It'll come. It'll come back to me. I'm sure, sure. it will. Sorry about um, that. How the crypto market's doing? I see gold is soaring, John. Yeah, so gold, gold is gold hit an all time high once again this week. Uh, they're trying to keep silver under thirty dollars, but we know it's going to prop back up. The banks are trying to short it big time because they're trying to scarf it up. Because as we've talked about many times, there's a shortage on silver, comparatively speaking, to gold. To gold. Uh, just on the robotics AI manufacturing. Before we get into, before we continue with that, I did want to mention to you also, Germany. I think uh, I have a buddy over in uh, Potsdam near Berlin, and he tells me that uh, they're pretty much axing all the nuclear fission power over there 
and, and everybody thinks, oh, that's just to get rid of nuclear energy. Could it be, David, that maybe that's making room for some of the new technologies Tesla. and natural patents that are going to be coming out? And it's really a good thing, but it looks like a bad thing. You know, it's moves and counter moves. Uh, but as far as the commodities go, yep, you're seeing uh, we're anticipating September 18th. They're going to the Fed is going to price in a 50 basis point rate cut. That's going to be the axe, the official optical death nail of the old system. What a coincidence, David. They did this 16, we're in a 16 year cycle. They did this in September of 08. Remember with the bank bailouts, I was leaving yeah. the East Coast to come over here to move. Thank God we, we made it out about 10 days before the Lehman Brothers incidents were happening and they tanked the economy. And uh, now we're doing it again, but in reverse. So they're just gonna continue to do rate cuts, which is gonna send commodities skyrocketing. It's gonna send, it's coupled with the Middle East crisis is going to send oil prices skyrocketing. So uh, yeah, money is moving into gold and silver. It will move into the cryptos. As you know, XRP, I think about a week or two weeks ago, one, about a week and a half ago, won their case, which we knew was coming. Uh, they're suppressing that, but I, I do anticipate for folks who are curious about that, I am too. I think September, more precisely October of this year into April, May next year, we're going to see a super bull run cycle on the cryptos. XRP, XLM. Uh, they're going to try to slam down XRP so they can scarf it up before they let it skyrocket. So people should be buying the dips, be buying when they do that. Don't sell. Okay. Hold your positions. Hodl for dear life. That's the one message I want to tell the audience both sides. Go ahead. I need to, I need to tell something. I had a strange, this is, um, this happened two days ago, John. My phone started acting strange. I've got an iPhone. So the screen started going all weird and green. I said, what's all this? Um, then it says you got to do an automatic software update. So mm. it did the update. Didn't work. Phone went off. Went had a, They said the screen is damaged. I was like, all right, it's two, maybe three years old now. I've got an iPhone 13. Mm. Got a new screen on it. Did a, It did an automatic update. And I lost all my apps. So I've lost all of my crypto access. So people be aware of that. Now, luckily, I didn't have a hell of a lot. I had, a, you know, enough. You could buy a car with it, a small car, about five grand. That's it. Um, but it's all gone. So for the sake of the audience, I bought one of these um, nano sticks. I actually had it in the car, John. I was going to do it that day or the next day. Take it off those apps and put it in a secure location because I learned my lesson there. I've been meaning to do it for yonks and i just didn't get around to doing it but this new update just nuked my phone and wiped everything out all the contacts all fake photos videos anything i didn't have in the cloud and i don't put everything up in the cloud so it's good if you do have crypto please guys don't make the same mistake i did by um not downloading it onto a secure location i know you have john you've told me about two years ago you've done that you have it on a well yeah, remember Best. I told you I, I really some people like razors. I like the descent wallet personally. So I was anticipating something like this. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, and, and as far as the backups go, one thing I was told, it may be common sense to some, but I think obviously given what happened to you, it, it bears repeating. I was told by a tech friend that when they offer those updates, decline those updates because usually they come up with bug fixes after the fact. What the reason they do those updates is to erode your phone. And you just proved it. So yeah, I mean, they're bringing out a new phone in September, um, Apple. So right. it happens every year, but it was my yeah. own mistake. Um, it's something that's annoying me. There is a, a series of backup codes, but I think I took a picture of it. And I don't know where I've stored it or hid it somewhere. So um, the good thing about me, John, is, for example, if I ever lose my keys, and I think, okay, what did I do with that? I can just go into sort of semi-meditative state and I'll remember. I just, I have a feeling I'll remember how to get because when you reload the app, it says, okay, what's your secret codes and words and mm -hmm. song and dance, turn around three times, spit and break the curse, <laughs> put on a kilt. Um, so I might find it, but it's um, it's interesting that it's happened because, okay, this has driven me now to talk about it. And maybe I'm going to save a lot of people a lot of money by making sure that you secure it. If you've been lazy and left it on one of the apps on your phone or your left laptop, desktop, something get it off there, put it in a secure location. Um, we were Before, talking about employment. I'm gone. I'm sorry. I just, I want to add this to your point because it's very important. 
in addition to the hardware wallet, and this is another reason to, that it's good to do it, write your keys down. Sometimes you can go to the app and they will reset it for you or give you the chance to reset the keys. Make sure, David, you write it down, put it in a fairy day bag and put it in a safe because we're very closely watching on our team that there's gonna, they're gonna do a cyber attack between September and October. They're gonna try to say, that's the reason that the market's crashing and oh, we have this solution for you. Our audience knows better and yours likewise. Don't believe the hype. Central bank digital currency would be the solution. You'll offer right. you that. You get pennies. So right. yeah, um, for whatever reason, I was thinking there's always a hidden reason for me. I don't. I never really. I'm a little pissed off, but not too much. Um, we were talking about in, in employment or unemployment. That's the point I've forgotten about. Mm -hmm. I saw the statistics on how many businesses that are kind of really the backbone to American. Um, families, things like Applebee's and Outback, you know, they're such a popular places to go, you know. How many times have you been to an Outback? Oh, over the years? Yeah, a handful of times. Applebee's. Several, several times, several times. IHOPs. Right. There you go. All of these, they're closing down hundreds of these American iconic uh, family restaurants across the U.S. now. I saw the numbers on them, and, you know, some of these places, they're never going to recover it's not so much the McDonald's and the, the Burger Kings, but it's the, it's the places where you can sit down and at least have a pretty good meal. You know, Applebee's is good fun. They go great desserts and nice cocktails. And, you know, it's like TGI Fridays you meet there, but it's, it's kind of part of a, a American culture, really. I think, but I was a bit sad when I saw these cracker barrel, there's another one closing a lot of these down. And this is not due to, um, people's interest it's due to these businesses that can't afford to stay open john because here's the thing they can't buy the produce and get the prices that people are used to anymore you know what used to be 12 dollars is now 20 dollars. that makes a big difference if you've got a family of four five or six going out on a friday night for an anniversary one of the kids birthday you know it's a it's a substantial amount of um pie that they have to pay for to um, just to have the same lifestyle. And I've seen the receipts from people here. Yeah, I went to Costco two years ago. Here's my receipts now. The cost of living in the States, is, it's gone through the through the ceiling. Yeah. In the 1940s and 50s, you know, mom would stay at home. Dad would go to work. They'd have a large, nice house in the suburbs in a good neighborhood that was safe and, and clean. Two cars on the driveway. Really nice family vacation twice a year, Grand Canyon or maybe up to Maine or something. And they'd go up there. And now, even with both parents working, they can barely afford to keep the wolves from the door. It's just the economy, what the Biden administration has done, you know, gas prices and salaries are coming down. And then, of course, Biden giving all the manufacturing back to China, because this mm -hmm. was the thing in the 40s and 50s. The USA was a manufacturing um, strong horse. You know, the car industry, look at Detroit alone. Um, and this is one of the things Trump I like about me saying, listen, we got to think about America first. We got to look after our own, you know, and they haven't. The Biden administration have given all the business away. They're exporting every importing everything. They've given it all away. Um, and now they're eating into the National Petroleum Reserves. That's you're only about 10 days to 14 days away from a major disaster when you, you're playing with those uh, petroleum reserves the crude oil and the gasoline. So the quicker this idiot is out of office, the better. Um, Derek was also talking about tracking the airplanes and the, and the call signs uh, when they're saying but Air Force One is flying around. Well, there's no support on Air Force One flying around. It's just an airplane they're saying is Air Force One, but you know, there's no other, <clears throat> it doesn't change its normal sign into a military sign when it's in operation. Right. So there's, you know, if you do follow what he talks about and several others that are all on this, the networks we do, you can see that there is massive cover up and uh, they are getting ready to do something, moving all this equipment around. And so watch the markets. Yeah. And, and if I may, David, just two quick points to add to what you said, it was very important. It's, it's really important and interesting that you should bring up about <clears throat> the layoffs and the closure of stores because some of my family back in South Florida, as you know, I've talked to them and they're like, hey, you know, this Walgreens is closing up and they said to send another location. And we talked to the manager of that location. It's been there for, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. And they said it, they, as far as they know, right now it's open, but it's subject to change and it's going to close, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
Um, here's my spin on it for you and for our audience is another way to, because like you said in our last show, we, we bring complimentary things to the table. That's why it works so well. Yeah, yeah. And it always has, and I'm grateful for you and, and for that. But um, here's the positive spin. I, I get people on my show that sometimes say, well, you read these wrap ups and they're so negative and disparaging. Uh, where's the positive? Well, number one, you shouldn't be looking with physical eyes. You should be looking with spiritual eyes. You shouldn't be looking at what you think you see because nothing is as it appears to be. Here's the good news of it. You're having a changing of the guard worldwide. You know this, of uh, old corporations, old CEOs. The Rothschilds just laid off another person. I don't know if you knew that, but we reported no. that as well. The C, I can't remember his name, the CEO, he just laid off his CEO of financing two weeks ago. He'd only been there like less than two years but in that position, but he'd been there for decades. What I'm getting at, there's a changing of the guard globally. So don't, folks, don't look at these firings and resignations and all this other stuff as doom and gloom. You should be looking at it, in my humble opinion, as encouraging because you're going to see, you brought it up, the family, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. You're going to see mom and pop businesses, in my opinion, come back. Uh, people who are passionate about running a, a a car restoration, you know, company it could be out of their garage. It could be a small, I mean, we got real estate, David, I, I, we've been saying it for years. You know, this, cause you, you can back me up. You know, I've been talking about this for years. Now you have all these subject matter experts like Manorino and Peter Schiff and Andy Sheckman, all these people that we talked to are now wholly saying, yeah, you're going to see a 90 to 95% reduction in housing and in commercial real estate. You're already seeing it here in California. You asked me about what's going on with that. I'm seeing businesses pack up left to right. We had a mall here that was uh, as illustrious as they come. Three floors, 250 locations. And with a buddy of mine, guess how many stores are open now within three floors? I would say 30%. Including the food court, 27 stores. Macy's furniture. Out department, of how many? Like 250. 250 filled that mall. Wow. Yeah, that's more than that's yeah, that's Maybe, 65. Yeah, it's like 75, left. something like 70, 75 percent, whatever. Yeah, yeah, very high percentage have pulled out. They just well, it is strange those stores, John, because a lot of like they all seem like they're laundering money or something to me. The a lot of these stores, like just cheap jewelry, you know, trinkets and things you put in your hair. How can you open a massive store and run it and make money off it? It's feeling very strange that. So then people say, David. Oh, well, that's just because people are doing business online with online stores. Oh, yeah? How do you people explain that Google has laid off 126,000? I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Big tech has laid off 126,000 people to date. And that number is only going to rise with four plus months left in the year. So that can't be it. What I'm getting at is it's a change of the guard. We're seeing the old fade away and God is bringing a new season. He's going to bring, he's going to restore godly businesses. We're going to have mom and pop shops again, like we had in fifties. You're going to watch the prices in America and throughout the world. I, certainly in America, I, I don't know about the world, but I would imagine as the America goes, the world goes typically. So you're going to see prices drop like a rock. Once he's back in there, you're going to see gas will be, you'll be amazed how low that is. I just told you about houses. I have a good buddy in Tennessee where I'm moving to. He works for a real estate development company. So they subdivide, they buy all this land, they subdivide the lots for houses. He tells me for the last couple of months what they've been doing, David, check this out. They buy this land, they build the, you know, half an acre or quarter, whatever the size of the house is, right? And just to keep the prices affordable, they're paying thirty to fifty thousand dollars a year on the interest on the each house just to keep these prices within a four to five hundred thousand dollar range. Now, when you go down to 90 or 95 percent when you have cash like we will in this wealth transfer god's people that's why we're doing this to prepare everyone to be successful and you as well now you're talking a five hundred thousand dollar house is forty to fifty thousand dollars my parents house that they bought in 1979 in massachusetts was forty thousand dollars somebody bought it last year the five families have gone in since we had to sell it back in 2002 Last year, somebody bought it for three hundred thirty-five thousand with a ninety percent or more reduction. You're talking that house is now worth thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars. That's less than it was forty-five years ago. What am I getting at? You're going to yeah. see affordable houses on one income. The nuclear family with the man at the center, where he's supposed to be, a woman being in her feminism—excuse me, femininity, not feminism—because the enemy always crafts the words. 
Uh, you're going to see the nuclear family. You're going to see a reconstructed society where people are going to need each other again. We're going to be working together. Our greatest strength, and we know this, well, it's what we're doing, is your unity. Satan and the cabal want division. We know this. Race, politics, you name it. Look up, there's more of us than them. And when we, we are going to be forced in a good way to start working together again. So you're going to see prices drop across the board. Going to a restaurant won't be corporate GMO based food. It will be, you know, somebody who is homemade cooking um, as good or better than what your family can make at really, really cheap prices. In the interim, going back to precious metals, having the junk silver, having some silver rounds, will be able to feed and for, uh, clothe your family for an entire month. Will easily get you don't need a lot of silver just to be able to weather the storm the other half of that precious metals is to be able to protect your wealth transfer that's incoming right so you hedge against what could i don't think anything can happen but hedge against whatever the enemy is trying to do you see so i actually look at this as a really positive thing in seeing the bigger picture what we need to make great again david i'm sure you would agree is humility and accountability and that's exactly what i believe is the order of the day well, if we get rid of these large corporations, just as Walmart and Kmart and these massive conglomerates, these are the guys that are responsible for destroying the mom and pop business on the high street. Mm -hmm. You know, the bakeries, the butchers, um, news agents, candy store, run, you know, local pharmacy that's not a Walgreens. It's run by one guy that knows everybody. He says, oh, you know, I, I remember the day your mother was pregnant and you were born. And, you know, this sort of, small town community feeling is a great thing i grew up with that and i think it's brilliant you know everybody it was bad at the time you know that you couldn't go into the pharmacy and buy anything because the woman would tell your mom what you were doing <laughs> so <laughs> there was a downside yeah. to it but um i can definitely see that happening because look the the food that they're producing in these massive factories that they're putting into the walmarts and the kmarts and costcos um it's just garbage and it's slowly poisoning everybody. <clears throat> I, it, it, you know, I, I actually can feel my neurons in my brain just slowing down. If I do have to eat something that was like, Oh, that wasn't good. I can feel it straight away. My energy, my body. So having raw milk and things like that come back in instead of all this pasteurized and, you know, imported Absolutely. stuff that you don't know where it's from or where it's, you know, I do a lot of, obviously I, I manufacture medicines now, John and, when I first started, the, the major uh, influence in this, a very, very double PhD in, in several um, sciences, said to me, most of the stuff that you'll buy from a health food store is the sweepings off the floor, Mahoney. You can't believe how bad quality it is, but it's packaged and sent into these large corporate stores, and everybody just assumes, oh, it's in Walgreens, it must be amazing. Right. But he says, if you ever do the analysis on it, you'd be surprised how low it actually is when the, and it's not telling you that in the bottle. So, I mean, I would look forward to these days when we do get back into this um, affordable housing and work inside the communities to better the community, improving the schools, get the education system, teaching kids. You know, they don't get taught the things like, you know, do you, you really think a kid now could sew a button on his shirt, John? If you took a 16-year-old kid now and said, your shirt, your, your button, come off that shirt, sew another one on, I could do it. I can repair stuff like that. I know how to cook. Because we were taught basic things like this. Right. Woodwork, car mechanics, you know, general, general, you know, how to change a tire on your car. You know, most kids don't have a clue about that. And I see a lot of them asking, you know, uh, uh, here's a new one. A lot of kids don't know how to tell the time, John, because they just look at the phone. The geography is bad because they look at the phone. Yeah. They were not. And I'll, I'll give you the, the, the very best way for you, anybody to understand this sort of modernized phenomenon is navigation systems, okay? Some people, even though they take the same route every day, they still put it on the navigation system and they, you're never going to learn. They just say, turn left and turn right. I don't use it. If I once I know the way, I like getting lost. I, I refuse to use it unless I really have to, because you're not going to learn. And when I was in the '90s in London, I lived with a, a, a good friend of mine. We lived in it. We shared a house together. He, he used to be a motorcycle courier. So when we we're in the car together, he knew all of London, the back streets. And because I sat in the car with him and I watched it, 
I became very, you know, I could have been a taxi driver in London, which is a very difficult job. It's a very difficult examination. Didn't know all the street names, but I thought, oh, yeah, I know where that is. I know the way. Um, and this is it. We become a society of just convenience. And that it stems from the home where the parents were too busy working. They put the television on. How many kids do you see in a restaurant now? They just hand them a tablet or an iPhone and just put cartoons on while they're trying to have a, a bite to eat. Mm -hmm. All of this, this would be amazing if this was stopped and we went back to that when we're not so rushed, we can take the time out there to speak to our families and people can afford to keep mom at home and focus on the on the household and, uh, and the, the child or the children inside the household. It's a very important part of life. We were very blessed, John, to be raised in that sort of community and time period where we understood it was a great way to grow up. Yeah, my child was amazing. Yeah. Growing up in Ireland, it was like the Wild West. There was no rules. You know, I wasn't, my parents were not worried about murderers or pedophiles or kidnappings or poisoning or, you know, being struck with laser weapons from the sky or, you know, are you breathing okay today? Because I know there's a lot of chemtrails. So these yeah. days when you're back, it's, it's the only way forward. I mean, I, remember, I agree. I remember being a little kid and with my friends and back in West Springfield, Massachusetts and riding in our, our little park. And that was your, that was your social media circle. And the, we didn't have phones and all this crap. And, and it, it was a simpler time. And there's a way to balance the two, right? It, to your point. But the only, the only notification we got was our, our dad's whistle to come home for dinner. And we'd hear it clear across, you know, several <laughs> streets down from the park. It was loud and pronounced, thank goodness. And we knew that was our signal and we were good with it. And, and it was fine. And you sat with your parents at the dinner table and you weren't like this the entire time and you were engaged. I mean, I, I was driving home the other day and this guy on my block, he was so ensconced in his phone, you know, with the zombie thing mentality. He didn't even see me. I'd honk at him to get him to lift his face off the screen. I mean, people are, and that's exactly what, you know, the cabal wants. Now, going back a second, I got to bring this point up, David, because it's very important. We were talking about the Walgreens and other locations closing up, right? Yeah. Here's a good example. Focus on what you don't yet see, not on what you think you're seeing in temporary circumstances. So people are looking at Walgreens, Rite Aid, all that stuff closing up, right? And, but what's taking its place? Tesla med bed centers are being, I'm seeing locations scattered throughout the country. Uh, I'm here in California, we're seeing medical offices closing up and whatever happens here finds its way around the country as a trend, in, in this case, it's a good thing, not, not in other ways, but I'm saying the closure part of the old guard for people not sure what I meant. So you're going to see, if you haven't already seen it, hospitals, medical clinics closing up, med beds are going to be taking their place. And I believe that's going to be in the not too distant future. They're, they're phasing it in so people can get used to the process because if they did it shotgun, people wouldn't be able to handle it. So Trump's team is, you know, I talked to you know, our buddy, Nick. And when I, when I saw him last year, face to face in, in Miami, we talked about this very subject. And I said, you know, you've met Trump. He watches your shows. Mahoney and I are on it. What does he think? He said, well, they don't like it. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, they have a certain way in which they want to wake people up. Yes. It's not as fast as we would like it. I know, I know, but it's, we're not in control of this, but God is but they're waking up people's system because we have to think about the people who don't know what we know. We're, we're in the minority, David, unfortunately. I, we would like it to be different and we're working our best to effectuate that change. But as it stands, you just, you ask me, what do I see around my neighborhood in California? I see a lot of people angry, tense. They don't know what's up. They know something's wrong, but they have no clue why as a general rule of thumb. We yeah. know exactly. We're dialed in, thankfully, right? But, but there's a lot of people who are not. And so they recognize that. So they have a very systematic, methodical way in which they're doing it. Again, it's not as quickly as we would like it, but God showed us mercy when we were in their position. We need to learn collectively in this community to do likewise. Now, there's one other thing I want to show you real quick, if I can share my screen with you. This will give sure. some encouragement to you and to both of our audiences. So I have told people that the Federal Reserve was baked into the Treasury in 2020 under President Trump as he is still the CIC today, Derek would attest to that, right? And we've interviewed him, so we know that. Talked to SG Anon, he confirms this likewise. So I've told people in my own personal life, I've beaten the Internal Revenue Service, big difference, that's under the 
uh, constitution, the IRS under the corporation. Remember, in a lot of these instances, David, in corporations and in government, there's two twins. There's a bad twin and a good twin. We only typically see the bad twin. The good twin is behind the scenes. I'm going to prove that. So people say, one guy in Rome said, oh, prove me wrong. I looked on the Federal Reserve site. The Federal Reserve isn't going to admit this until the very end, right? That's part of this wake-up operation. So people think if the bad guys don't admit, hey, we're out of business, well, then it must still be true. Not true. And I'm going to prove this person wrong very quickly. So I'm going to share with you my screen. Let me know when you can see this. So as you know, I defeated the Internal Revenue Service uh, on a previous business, and they wound it back from a 2019 uh, last time I filed tax. I haven't filed in, in years, thankfully, because as you know, there's no law in the IRS that says you have to for individuals. Uh, and this was a, a single a company entity that I was running. Anyway, long story longer, um, I defeated them at IRS level. Then there was a federal tax court here in LA that I started with before I dealt with the IR Internal Revenue Service directly. So I had to unwind it back is my point. If I don't give context, you and the audience will not know what I'm talking about. Then I got this letter, as you can see, I don't know if it says the date here, but this was about two weeks ago, I got this. So it's this month. And you can see clearly, David, right here as they zoom in, Department of, let me move this over here so you can see it, Department of the Treasury Internal Revenue Service. It says nothing about the Federal Reserve, IRS. There's a difference, folks, with words. Words matter. Yeah, it says the IRS logo, but so what? It doesn't say here, IRS is Internal Revenue Service. That's under the Constitution, right? They use something I'm highlighting here, CAF numbers. Yeah. That means centralized authorization file. It's a repository of all the financial transactions we've ever done. Taxes, uh, income from jobs, uh, businesses, um, purchases on cars, purchases on homes, that sort of thing. It's all encapsulated here. So people say, well, how, is, how are they going to know what to pay us back on an ASARA? This is one of the ways because they have a file. So when I talked to the federal tax court in LA, I said to the attorney, why did it take you so long to get back to me with the response to, to vindicate me? Oh, because we have COVID. I'm like, no, 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 no. That ain't the real reason. What's the real reason? Oh, we've been restructuring. Oh, I said, you're going from a collections agency to a payment services. He got quiet. And he said, I can neither confirm nor deny that. I said, that's okay. You just did. So look at this, David. <laughs> Based on nothing, as a result, you don't owe us any money. Look at the amount that they were winding back, 17 Hmm, that's a curious number. Why 17? <laughs> yeah. Kind of random, huh? Or is it? $17. Well, here's how I look at it. Trump is Q, Q is 17. This is where the Treasury Department has been one of the locations, yes, but now we see it as being a place that is going to be used by Nasara to repatriate and pay back people. You see that what I just showed you, Department of Treasury, Internal Revenue Service, doesn't say Federal Reserve. That's important. You can't discount that. And under my name, they had a percentage sign. What's that code for? In care of, by the way. I don't look it up. That's what it means. So this is another piece of proof that the, the system is unwinding and going in reverse. Think of this as a locomotive. You can't take a locomotive or a steam train at going 100 miles, 80 miles an hour, whatever it is, and stop it full stop. It has to stop demarcate, turn around in reverse course. And that's exactly what we're seeing happen. So this coupled with the other things we talked about should give you and your audience and my audience more comfort and, and reassurance as a personal case study that we've already won this and it's it's being turned for, for our benefit. Yeah, interesting. You're the only guy that I know has actually done that. Um my strategy has always been I've just I don't tell them anything. My entire life, I have never told the government a single thing about me. They ask me to fill out a form, I don't. And if they say, Well, we're gonna do this, I'll say, Well, I don't care. For example, you can open up a company if you don't return your tax returns or if you don't make any declarations, they say we're gonna wind the company down. I say, Well, I don't care, do it. You know, you think that's the last cold Coca-Cola on the beach, pal. Do what you want. Because, you know, you have to live in a country for more than six months of the year to be um, eligible for taxes. And I don't, the amount of traveling. So when they have asked me, say, where do you live? I say, I live everywhere. So, well, what do you do for a living? It's none of your business. 
we've looked up your social media. I said, well, good for you. <laughs> so, but they can only get you if you voluntarily say, oh, I want to pay you some taxes. Can I fill out the form? And you're right. You're absolutely right, John. Um, so you're the only guy I know that's actually taken them on. And there's the evidence for you to say, well, you show me where it's law in the, in the Constitution. I have to pay you. You don't. John, I can you the contract I have with you. It even says voluntary, doesn't it? Voluntary contribution. For Everything is by consent, voluntary. free will. Yeah. So you need, you can form your own strategy for that. Admittedly, for the audience that are now squirming in there, thinking, well, that's, well, that's not. <laughs> the problem is once you're in the system, it's very hard to get out. If you're in that quicksand, that quagmire, it is difficult to get out. I was just absolutely pu purely coincidental and fluky that I just, I don't like never I've never liked anybody in authority and I've just ignored all of it my entire life and moved around a lot. My parents were my dad was a rogue. He would never fill in anything either. My mother just she just always thought she was a you know it was beneath her. Oh, filling in a bloody form. I'm not doing that. Just let me in for God's sake, you know. Fill mm. in this and that. She didn't she didn't like any of that tracking and um and uh, yeah, my father taught me a couple of interesting things. Here's another good one, guys. Um, he said, whenever you get asked to sign anything, then nobody ever checks it against your signature. Like if you have to sign for a ticket, sign here, or sign a contract, if a rental contract on a commercial property, they never actually get your ID and go like that with it. So if you do sign it, don't sign it. Just put a signature there or a scriggle. Because if they ever come back and say, well, you signed this contract. Say, mm. well, hang on a second. Let's check the signature, shall we? That says Mickey Mouse. Doesn't say my name. Be surprised how many times you can get away with it. People don't check things like that. No, it's true. Amazing. Um, well, David, what when else were we going to talk? Sorry, real quick. I apologize. Uh, go, when you do a passport here go, in America, go, go well, I don't know if the, how this works overseas. So I can only speak to what I know. But here in America, when you fill out a passport, the language is right there. They have to tell you. It says at the top, are you a citizen or a national? Why would they put that there? Because they know that's the way out. I didn't know, you know, five, 10 years ago, what I didn't, you know, 25 years ago when my parents had businesses, what I know now. So that's why I took action because you, you learn, you, you change, right? You adapt. Um, but here's something for people to think about. What is a citizen? A citizen defined by the constitution as somebody who lives in the DC area, which is not American territory, it's British territory, by the way, just like New York, just like California. I live here, I, I would know, I've been in both cities. Uh, do you work for the government? Most people don't. Do you make privileged income? No, you make earned income. The Bible says you cannot tax a man or woman by the sweat of their brow. So you're not a citizen. Yeah. They've made you one by consent because you don't know they take advantage of your kindness and in many cases, ignorance. So I fought it back because once I learned what their game was, I, I knew how to challenge them. Everything is codes and language, David. You know, the old movies, you're, you're an actor, you've done movies, you know, they, the movie where the guy in the door opens the slit, what's the password, what's the passcode? Yeah. Everything is code and language. So once you understand how to beat these bastards at their own game, you can take them on. But the point I'm trying to make is that as President Trump comes back in optically, he's already removed. When he says, I'm going to remove, this is important for you in the audience to hear. When he says, I'm going to remove income tax, it's because he already did it. I just proved it once again. What, you know, So this is why we do shows on common law trusts. Because this way, when you buy your house at 90, 95% off from the wealth transfer, right? you use a proof of funds from the bank or whatever you're going to do, silver, crypto, what have you, but you have the money. You get an extra discount when you pay cash. This you know. So then you put your house in a common law trust, which is why we did the purposes of these shows with our guests to help people in this movement facilitate that wealth transfer. Because what you're getting, David, is two things. You're getting the wealth, but you're also getting the purchasing power. It's the greatest PL profit loss sheet you'll ever get because God is setting up his people, equipping them to win. So we won't be paying income tax anymore. You don't have to pay property tax because most people don't realize you don't have to register a deed with the county or municipality where you live. There's no law that says you do. Nobody just like taxes. People just do it by consent because they think that's what you're supposed to do. Real estate agents, some know, but a lot, mine, mine who's wonderful didn't know. 
it's not her fault. But what I'm saying is, is, you know, taxes by and large are unfortunately a, a British monarchy thing. And we're reversing course. Yeah, it's a scam. It's a scam because the Federal Reserve. And look what, no look, go ahead. Look what they do with it. They go to war. They send your sons and to overseas, get them killed, bring them back in a body bag. It's a shameful thing. And then what they use their money for is nefarious. And I think everybody has oh. the right to say, listen, I'm not giving you money to persecute innocent people and bomb children and you know over in Gaza and what you're doing experimenting and with vaccines and sweeping all the money and child trafficking through the Ukraine and mass weapons of mass destruction that you were actually making in the in in the states and all of your mm -hmm. industry there mm -hmm. Lockheed and all of the arms and weapons development funds and the industrial complex building massive underground bases this is all being siphoned off from public tax funds all money think about david a hard discussion to have but it's an honest one it's the elephant in the room we got to have and i think most of our audience is probably aware of this all wars are banker wars even even q has yeah. said that and it's like whether you like them or not the group doesn't matter the truth is the truth i mean our beloved soldiers men and women fought as trump said needless wars to make these cabal rothschild bastards rich you know, we know about the Titanic. That's it's 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 heartbreaking. But I had mil I have military family, I have military brothers and friends, and uh, and they were they've all admitted. I mean, think about the the military that's still around today. Some of which are in this movement know, and some some don't. I, I don't know who knows what. But when the light goes on for them that they fought wars they never had to fight, these bastards never sent their families to the front lines, but they always sent ours. Think of that. Yeah. Well, they some of them went, but they were way back in the comfy offices, you know. I mean, my I know my friend. He says my dad got me posted on in the navy because he saw, you know, back in Vietnam, the uh, he didn't really think that the Vietnamese navy would be much of a threat because they're launching shells thirty five miles offshore. Mm -hmm. So he says I didn't see any action on a ship off the coast. Um, but yeah, that's what you're, you're right. They manipulate all of this just to keep the money rolling in create situations and create um solutions i'm watching carefully this this new virus that they're talking about john they've renamed it a little bit from monkeypox to mpox i noticed but um i do think they're going to try to do something with that because That's inside the original shot was simian dna ape dna as they used it as a binder as a carrier Correct. So I think they've already put it in there, and I think the five G is going to activate it. I think it's just it's a a manipulated form of shingles, West Nile virus. So if people do start developing lesions and weeping, horrible, disgusting looking things that look like you come straight from a bubonic sixteen thirty five plague movie, it's going to start freaking people out. But for the sake of the audience, if you have not been jabbed. And if you stay away from that, it's basic. It's very, it is treatable. It won't kill you, but they'll probably try to control the medication for it, which is very similar to what the other medication that they you can get rid of COVID with. So don't start freaking out if they start launching it, avian flu and monkeypox, because it's exactly what they want. They want you to stay in that energy of fear as we get closer to the voting polls. They are doing anything, and they desperately to can to keep Trump from winning because he's not going to show any mercy this time he's in there he was too light if you ask me he was too nice last time he let and he let a lot of them slide and let a lot of them go he didn't do anything the obamas i mean we were all talking about they've always they've already been executed etc and sector which i i would hope that these vermin have been brought to justice yeah. um but it's going to get weirder and weirder john and i think there's going to be a, quite a few more little bits and pieces of uh, incidents as we get closer to the polls, so try to stay out of the fear zone and just what you know. I like it. Charlie says it a lot. You should sit back and watch the movie. It's true. Put your feet up. Watch the movie. It is a movie. Well, yeah, it, but we need to trust God and, and continue to stay vigilant, um, staying in prayer and rebuking the enemy at every turn. We have more power again as a collective society than they do, and one of the best ways we can do it, in my opinion, David, is Ephesians six thirteen which says that you put on the armor of faith, if you put on the armor of God, right? Which is the shoes of peace, the belt of truth, sword of spirit, breastplate of righteousness, helmet of salvation, shield of faith. 
which thwarts off the fiery arrows of, of Satan. So the power of, of prayer and rebuking is, is critical because um, as we're doing that, that's, this is a spiritual warfare more than just bullets. That's a very small component, right? We know. So they're going to try all the fear porn they can on their way out. But yeah, Trump, Trump had to be uh, that way in his first term because he knew this was coming uh, because he had to play within the confines of a central banking system. He, he knew he didn't have enough support of the society yet to uh, remove the central bank. You remember to the left of his uh, Oval Office on the wall hung a picture of Andrew Jackson. Why? Because he was the second president in history to remove the central bank in the 1800s. He's going to be the third president in history to do that because he's already done it. So when he says, I'm going to bring the country back within six months, look at the timelines, David. Memorial Day of next year into July of 2026. Why is that? Because he's already done it and he's going to just roll this out systematically. The no taxes, the Nasara, the med beds. Now, I don't think we're waiting till relax, folks. I don't think we're waiting till next year. I'm just talking about the whole of society. But when he says, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, it's because he's already done it. And to your point, he's not going to be merciful. Did, I don't know if you saw on his uh, TikTok yesterday, uh, he had a picture of handcuffs. He said, these are safe and effective. They work. That was code for all the arrests that in many cases have been done. But he's going to show the public, in many cases, doubles, right, clones. He's going to show the arrests for the public, not our audience, but the public to see that you know bad guys are being brought to justice because a lot of us have said my own family's I, like, I, I want to oh it, it's going to happen it's 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 totally going to happen but it has to be done in a systematic way but my family's always like i want to see it i want to see it. I'm like you will you will but you have to be patient but look at how fast david time has gone i mean we were just sitting here a month ago and now here we sit i would yeah. be watch i'd be watching david it's the week of the 23rd i'd be watching over the next three weeks into the middle of september when they do this rate cut, watch Iraq, watch Vietnam with China, Taiwan. T t today, they're doing the Zimbabwe elections. We need to be watching Nelson. Oh, Jason. yeah. Could, totally forgot. Yeah, that's going to be an talking interesting. Talking about that. You see? Yeah, yeah. So it's everything is building to a, a, a fever pitch. Don't be surprised to see as these things happen, right? They're going to try to arrest Trump. He already knows. They've, they've got all this legislation. Derek Johnson's talked about it. Marshawn the corrupt Marxist judge who has been funneling money to the DNC, by the way, that's going to come out. Um, everything that it's going to be Heyman on the gallows, everything that was meant for our harm will be used for our good and go back against them. Yeah. John, I love it. We've come to the top of the hour again very quickly, but that was a really good show today. We covered a lot of different things. And I think it's important and people get a, a broad aspect of what we're both observing from our continued online work and interviews from people from all over the world. So I've always learned something speaking to you. I'm actually going to see if I can get a little bit of silver because I don't have any. I'm going to see if I can claw back. Maybe I'll sell one of my cars and God will send me a little secret mission to uh, make people aware, don't leave your crypto in a vulnerable place, guys, because I learned the lesson there. So maybe that's why he's done it who knows and we'll be back in september around about the same time for a chat and if there's anything else we're going to release any updates your telegram group as well john you're very very busy on that i don't use mine very much i just don't have the time but i know you're prolific at posting and getting the information out very rapidly and there you do a, a great job thank you putting thank you. and posting so keeping everybody updated and I suppose we'll see you in a month. But we, for the sake of the audience, we talk every day. How are you, John? What's going on? Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> yep, yeah, from across the ocean, brother. Well, thanks. Yeah, for you're probably the last of I look at at night usually before I turn the phone off because of the nine hour time difference. But John, much love, brother. Thanks for a great chat, and we'll see you in a month. Thank All you, right, folks. Well. I hope you found something that we've rambled on about of interest. <laughs> Take care. God bless.